Welcome to a new Team CGC 9.8 video. Today I have five underrated 9.8 comics to bind hold forever. Uh, so the first one up, it's an All-Star Squadron, number 47. This one is just a really great early Todd McFarlane cover to uh, consider, certainly if you're a big Todd McFarlane fan. This one came out in 1985, so a lot of the like Todd covers that I like are from 1988, like Hulk 340 and Maze of Spider-Man 300. Uh, so a little bit before his prime, I would say. Still a really great eye peeling cover, too. And there's not a lot on the census. Yeah, I think it's a great collector item. 29 in a 9.8 on the blue label. Uh, I did see one in a blue label sell on the Comic Link auctions recently. 28.7% uh, to 9.8 ratio. So a pretty fantastic 9.8 ratio for a book that's uh, not too heavily graded. So as a Todd McFarlane fan, I completely want this one. You don't see it very often, a 1 in 29. Yeah, um, great collector item. $300 in a 9.8 the one had sold for on the Comic Link auction. So if you're a big Todd McFarlane fan, I think $300 is just absolutely worth it. Uh, 9.8 white pages. It was in an old case. This one just ended about uh, three, four days ago on Comic Link. So, uh, you know, this is one I really will keep my eye out for uh, to purchase maybe myself. But uh, if you're a McFarlane fan, um, you know, some of his early covers maybe don't have the best eye appeal, but I, I really, you know, I think this one's a really cool one. So uh, All-Star Squadron 47 in a 9.8, around 300 bucks is just, uh, you know, feeling like a pretty great deal as a McFarlane fan, I think. Alrighty, next one is an Incredible Hulk number 228. This one is the first appearance of Moonstone. When uh, it's like the new Moonstone, when Carla Sofin becomes a uh, Moonstone, there's been quite like you know off and on kind of MCU rumors about Moonstone, and you know she's like in the Dark Avengers, I believe, and um, you know a, a prominent kind of villain of Hulk and Captain Marvel. I'm pretty sure, yeah, just doing a little research uh, in the last few days. But this is one I've sort of targeted off and on before because I absolutely love this cover. Yeah, it's like pretty much Moonstone, uh, kind of like Will Smith and uh, <laughs> the Incredible Hulk on the cover here. So, yeah, wow, there's going to be like so many uh, sort of metaphors about that Will Smith thing going forward. But, uh, yeah, just Moonstone giving the Will Smith to a Hulk on this cover. Looking great. Uh, Herb Trimpey on the cover art with Bob McCloud. So two of my favorite artists of this era. 51, uh, 9.8's in a blue label, 15%, the 9.8 ratio, just looks so fantastic on the census. Yeah, and there's something kind of special about some of these older Incredible Hulk books, too. They're just, I think they make really good collector items. Saw this one sell on eBay. It was, uh, I think, in late January was the last sale on eBay I'm, see I'm seeing. Uh, $568.88. I think that is just a price, tar price target to aim for. I think this book is absolutely worth... Uh, getting up to $600, probably even over for one of those 51. Uh, you know, looking great on the census. And a high potential first appearance there with Moonstone, I think. Uh, yeah, and certainly a little bit underrated, I think, uh, both of those first two, not being uh, super obvious uh, 9.8 key issues. Okay, uh, next one is a Star Wars number two. So uh, normally, like, uh, without that kind of Obi-Wan show coming out, I think Star Wars number two is certainly kind of underrated compared to Star Wars number one. Um, but it's a, it's a great key issue to focus on and to absolutely invest in if you're a big Star Wars fan. You get uh, first Obi-Wan, first Han Solo and Chewie as well. So absolutely big first appearances of characters. There's 149.8s in a blue label. I'm pretty sure there's like six or 700 of the first issue. So, you know, it's not going to be as popular as the first issue, but it looks great on, on the census. 5.5%, the 9.8 ratio. That's lower than the first issue, which is pretty fantastic. Saw one of these sell for $3,150. So, you know what? On this one, I did want to, you know, highlight it as a good underrated one. Usually it's overshadowed by the first issue. But leading into this Obi-Wan show, I wouldn't really look to purchase this one. Um, you know, be patient here, 6 to 12 months. And then uh, this will kind of go back to being a bit of an overlooked one. And I think uh, you'll probably be able to get a better value on a Star Wars number two, certainly in the 9.8 as well. You know, maybe you find, you know, one of these in a back bin or something for a great price. But uh, in a 9.8, it's going to be tough to get a deal with this uh, Obi-Wan show coming up soon. But uh, Star Wars number two is, is a great one. Okay, next underrated one is an Amazing Spider-Man number 209 in a 9.8. First appearance of Calypso. Calypso is kind of like uh, Craven's sort of right-hand woman, I guess you could say. Uh, she's looking pretty cool. I think, yeah, Calypso and Moonstone are sort of two, I think, pretty decent, you know, awesome key issues in the 9.8 that stand out on their own, but there is some, like, MCU potential, I think. Uh, you know, Calypso, 
maybe they bring in Craven into a um, Spider-Man movie. I think, you know, movie studios, it would make a lot of sense to have a Calypso in a Craven movie. And, you know, certainly they really like the kind of female heroes and characters and a villain, certainly. Uh, so uh, this one is uh, often overlooked, though, I think, um, you know, among Amazing Spider-Man keys. One I don't have, and I do like to have, you know, a lot of these Amazing Spider-Man ones in a 9.8. There's 234 9.8s in a blue label, 37.2%, the 9.8 ratio. Recent sales on eBay for this one. I saw one sell for $570 and $599 in a 9.8. So you can kind of aim right in those zones I, I think that's a pretty fair value for this one and uh, yeah hopefully calypso just comes out looking amazing in a spider-man movie this one's a lot higher in that environment and you can always kind of enjoy having these uh, amazing spider-man key issues in your collection uh, so consider that one next one uh, one i kind of talked about recently on a video but i think it's just kind of worth uh, going over again an uh, uncanny x-men number 139 i really think there's a quite a few kind of underrated things about this uh key issue it's, uh, you know, Kitty Pride joins the X-Men. I think most people know that just pretty much from the cover. But uh, Wolverine gets a new costume in this one as well. And it's a first appearance of Heather Hudson. And Heather Hudson basically becomes the leader of Alpha Flight. So I think, um, you know, if they ever did an Alpha Flight in a movie or something like that, I feel like some of these movie studios would probably just aim to have, like, a Heather Hudson leading the Alpha Flight rather than, like, Weapon Alpha or Vindicator. Because, you know, Vindicator's kind of a little bit like Wolverine, so I just feel like an Alpha Flight led by Heather Hudson would be awesome, and um, certainly this book would do so well in that kind of env environment. So there's a bit of a speculation value to this one, but from the John Byrne era of Uncanny X-Men comics, uh, just a, a classic run of comic books. So this one stands on its own as just a great investment-grade collector item as well. There's 258 9.8s in a blue label, 11.7%, the 9.8 ratio. Looking pretty fantastic on, his, on the census. Saw one sell recently for $680. That one is just totally worth $680, in my opinion, in a 9.8. Um, so if you're liking that one, consider an Uncanny X-Men 139. I really like this one, too. Like, if a really nice one popped up. I got 141 and 142 in the new stand edition 9.8. So if, like, a 139 in a new stand 9.8 popped up, I would be so tempted, you know, to grab that if it was, a, you know, anything kind of a reasonable price. <laughs> Okay, that's the five main one I wanted to focus on. I just got a bonus one here, Batman Beyond, number two in a 9.8. This one's pretty, like, overlooked and underrated, I think. The first issue, kind of, for good reason, is the one to get. But uh, in this one is the first time Terry McGinnis gets into the Batman Beyond suit. So you kind of, you know, the first time you see Batman Beyond kind of as we know him in issue two. He doesn't kind of get in the suit in issue one. So, uh, except on the cover, that's the kind of caveat, but uh, sort of in the story. This is a first appearance of Terry McGinnis as Batman Beyond, pretty much, in the Batman Beyond suit. I think this one's about 275 in a 9.8 right now, um, and I think it's, it's a pretty great one. All these uh, Batman Beyond books are pretty tough to find. I think they were kind of low-printed, 1999 comic book, so they all make pretty great collector items. But this one, yeah, uh, not too many people know that he doesn't get into, into the suit until this one. So I think uh, it's kind of an, an underrated one, for sure, to uh, consider in the 9.8, if you're a Batman Beyond fan. Okay, team, uh, thanks so much for watching, though. Yeah, just uh, great to uh, get a good list of uh, kind of some not-so-obvious 9.8s. I really like these kind of ones. Alrighty, thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on the next one. If you're liking my content, please subscribe and hit that bell, and I'll keep you updated on future videos.